All right, let's move on to Panthers Bucks. This is our last one o'clock game. Panthers Buccaneers. Then we move into the afternoon games, Sunday night game, and the Monday night game. Panthers Buccaneers. Bucks open up at minus eight and a half. Now they're nine or nine and a half. This total opens up at 48. Now it's 48 and a half. Let's start with the Panthers. Weak defense, questionable play calling, haunts the Panthers. 34 30 loss. Joe Brady. In the most important spot in the game, fourth and in inches at midfield, he doesn't call McCaffrey. He calls Alex Arma, and it's just a shocking decision. Shocking decision. Rule, you know, helped take the blame for it, but you just can't. You just can't do that. Uh, you know, you, there's a reason why you pay McCaffrey the big bucks. And, 134 yards from scrimmage, two touchdowns. He's got to have the ball there. Bridgewater looked good enough. You know, 22 of 34, 270 yards, one touchdown. And then let's go over to Brady. Threw two picks, and he padded his numbers in garbage time. But the first 54 minutes, he was 15 of 28 for 157 yards. Not only that, but the Saints were flagged four times for defensive pass interference. Evans played after missing practice with the hamstring injury. One catch, two-year-old touchdown. Ronald Jones, 17 carries for 66 yards. Fournette, five carries for five yards. Should the Buccaneers be this big of a favorite? Absolutely Probably. not. Uh, I, I don't know. Like People jumped on, on Tampa because of Brady, because of Gronk. And, you know, I, I said it the other day. I said Brady's in a new system. He's – doesn't have the same old line he used to have. Uh, he doesn't have the same chemistry he has with receivers. Look, he missed some open receivers. Uh, I, I don't – look, a lot of people were joking that the Bucks spent a lot of money and got a lot of hype to go 8-8. Eight and eight. And, you know, joke or not, I, I kind of think that's where they land. And the Panthers offensively surprised me, at least in week one. I thought – well, I, I don't know if they surprised me so much as, as – they, they they did better than I thought they would. I, I knew they, they had a lot of talent, but I didn't think they were going to do that well. And I, I just think the spread is too big to hold down uh, that Panthers offense. That that looked good. Their defense still looked terrible. Um, that's going to be a concern. It's going to help Tom look a little better this week. But I think somebody said to me the other day, Tom Brady has thrown a pick six in three straight games. Uh, he just – he doesn't have the zip on the ball, and he's playing in the wrong offense, talented or not, weapons or not. He's playing in the wrong offense to have a, a floppy arm. So I don't I don't love Tampa running away with this. I I don't see it as a, as a good spot to – what are they, nine and a half? Yeah, there are nine and a halves out there. Let me see what the best spot I could give you here. Panthers, Buccaneers, a ton of nine and a halves, mostly nine and a halves. Plus nine and a half, the lowest juice is minus 110 at Fox Bet and Bet MGM. Is that official? I don't know if it's official. I still don't know how I feel about it. I don't think Brady's going to play as bad as he did. Last week, I mean, let's let's not pretend that the Saints aren't a fantastic team. I mean, they were probably the second best team in the NFC last year, and they got better. So, I don't, I don't know about this. Like, it's such a big spread. I want to take the Panthers, but I still think that Panthers defense is just awful. Robbie Allen says Tampa isn't going to take the Panthers lightly. They're going to stop McCaffrey, make Bridgewater beat them, and score 31 points, probably 31-21 game Tampa wins. I, I, I'm getting nine in my book, and I'm going to take it. Plus yeah. nine for the Panthers. Uh, you don't have to force official plays. You have started the year 5-0. and oh. You've made two already on the card. No need to force anything. And Brady says, agreed, Bebsy, such an overreaction to Breeze that Bucks D is getting no credit. Are you going to stay off making this official, Bebsy? Um, I don't know. When it comes back around at the end of the show, I might have a different of opinion, difference of opinion, but right now I, I'm staying off it. Viper NB is on the over 48 and a half. That's a look that makes sense to me, although 
you know, that the Bucks D is going to be tough this year. What do you think of this total? Um, I think, yeah, I'd, I'd lean towards the over as well. Just, just because I was impressed, but by Carolina's offense in week one, but you know, again, I don't, I don't want to get too excited about week ones, especially with a, I don't think the Raiders defense is terrible. Um, I, I think they are better than they were last year, and I think they will get better. They didn't play great in week one, but again, trying to stop Christian McCaffrey is such a difficult thing to do. And I, I know what you're saying, Jimmy, about about not giving McCaffrey the ball uh, at fourth and one, but the flip side of that is if he doesn't go McCaffrey and they convert, then all of a sudden they're talking about what a genius move that was. Everyone thought it would go to McCaffrey. So sometimes that pays off and sometimes it doesn't. I don't, I don't hate the play. I understand, you know, you put the ball in your, in your game, game breakers hands, but I don't, I don't hate that call as much as it seems like everyone else did, but you know, maybe who knows? I'm a psychopath, whatever. <laughs> uh. I, I like the spot for the Panthers. I can, if I had a free play, I certainly would take the over 48, 48 and a half, but I'm not as high. I, I'm low on this Raiders defense. 